Hey everybody, so um, <clears throat> a co-worker asked me uh, how to trim videos. So basically what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you that. This is a YouTube video that I've got that I've already posted up there. Just a simple thing about pinning extensions. So let's say I wanted to cut it in half or get rid of the beginning or get rid of the ending or trim it somehow. There's a couple ways to do it. So I'll start with one of the easier ways. Um, using a built-in program in Windows 10. There's two built-in uh, things that you can do, and then there's one using um, the video editor that I normally use. So let's start with the easiest. Right-click the video you want to trim, come down here to Open With, and do Photos. Hey everybody, so, uh, and that'll start by just playing it. But instead of playing it, you can come up here and click Edit and Create, and then you can do Trim. So that's one of the easiest ways to do it. And then you literally would just take this and move it to where you want it to go. And then the more recent videos that I, uh, hang on, I'm sorry, move these to where you want them to go. <laughs> My mistake. This is just the, the player bit. This will cut off the beginning or the end. And if you need to, uh, you can always uh, create copies of this video as well. So like say you want to keep the beginning and want to keep the end but get rid of the middle, okay, then you would slide this back over here and do this. Save it as, let's say, beginning, something like that, whatever. You get the idea? Let it save it, which might take a minute or two. Depends on your computer and how fast your system is and all that stuff. So now you've got the beginning, right? Um, and then, right click, open with photos again. Do edit, create again, trim. And then slide it that way. And then do save as. And you're seeing it's going into the pictures folder by default. Save that as ending. Give it a second or two. Oh, hurry it up, come on. Okay, and now I've got these videos, which is just the beginning and the ending with the middle cut out. Uh, so this is the beginning one. Hey everybody, so a friend of mine and a co-worker uh, reminded me, and you can see that's much shorter than it was, and then this one's the ending one. Um, the saved Google Drive thing is another one you might want to pin, but... So that's probably the easiest way to trim them. Um, let's get rid of these. That's the, that's the original one, yeah. Uh, so let's say you want to do something a little bit more advanced, right? you can open up the video editor, which if you don't know how to find that, I've got another video on YouTube about specifically where to find the video editor. But you can open up the built-in video editor uh, within Windows and do new video project. And then just take this here, new video. Sure, we'll name it that. Um, and this saves it to your project library, which I think is in your documents somewhere. Let me check here, or is it videos maybe? Yeah, I think it's in there, perhaps? One of these. Uh, 1223, actually it might be this right here. Um, 1223, 22, yeah, I think this right here is like the initial file, so I think it's the, the, the end file will end up right here inside of videos. So anyways, we will minimize that. This section of it right here is for where you put your clips in. So you can just drag and drop or you can use the add button. I'm just going to drag and drop it. So now that's not in the video, but it's available to be put into the video. So then you could take and drag it and drop it down there. Let's make that larger. And this is your storyboard. So you can drop other videos in there. You can add a title card. You can do other things. So let's do trim. And now, similar deal, you just trim it with these things right here. 
and then you can cut out, you know, beginning, middle, end, whatever. You can even add this a second time. So again, this is where it starts to get a little bit more advanced. If you wanted the beginning and then the ending without the middle part, you might want to use this instead uh, because you can put, say, the beginning here and then the ending here by doing trim again, trimming up the ending, and done. Okay, so now I've got the two clips that I want. And then you would do finish video and go through it that way. I'm not going to because I don't need that. Um, and let's see. I think that saves, yeah, I think it saves uh, as temp files. So you might want to occasionally open this up. Yeah, I've got a bunch of, of junk in here. And uh, select these and then delete them, remove them. Um, they are like temp files, but sort of temp files. So anyways, I'm going to remove them so that they're just gone totally and don't take up any space. You may want to occasionally do that. I think now I can delete this. Nope, that must be... Ha! Huh. No, nope, my mistake. That's this recording. So I'm not sure where it's recording them to, but it might ask you where it's recording it to. Uh, sorry, that recording was from OBS, so you can ignore that one. But when you go and do finish, I think it'll ask you where you want to save it. Um, it's fairly simple. The built-in Windows tools are fairly straightforward. The issue with this one right here, although it seems like there's a bunch that you can do when you open a new project, at least for mine, um, with my computer, with my setup, which is a little bit old, but still pretty powerful, once I get more than, I don't know, four or five videos, more than a few operations, I get glitches with the end product. When I do finish video, it'll seem fine, but maybe somewhere in there the colors will shift, or there'll be a, a black frame, or there'll be a white frame, or uh, something will come in wrong. This is just not a great program, basically, for professional use, for simple things. Uh, like trimming a video, it works fine. But once you start to add multiple things in there, it starts to suck. And so I would recommend if you're going to be doing this a bunch, and if you're going to be doing more than just simple trimming, like if you want to mess with the audio, if you want to um, add multiple tracks, things like that, I would use OpenShot Video Editor, and that's what I do use. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've made a video about OpenShot before, but you can just do open shot download. It's free, it's open source, it's available for Linux, Mac, and Windows, uh, and apparently Chrome OS uh, as well. I've never tried that one though. Um, I've used it on Linux, Mac, and Windows, and the interface is the same. You can get it from here, you can get it using a torrent. I know it seems like free software is usually full of viruses and, and junk and add-ons and stuff, but not typically open source software as long as you get it directly from the, the maker of the software. And the reason is just their business model doesn't rely on that type of thing, and it's community driven. So it genuinely is like the community who, who likes to build this type of stuff just doing good uh, and offering this stuff for free. So at any rate, OpenShot is a good one. There's lots of others. Um, Adobe Premiere, I think, is, is the Adobe version of video editors. That's a really professional one. Of course, there's Final Cut for Mac, which you have to pay for. There's KDEN Live, K-D-E-N Live. The thing is, they're all gonna be kinda similar as far as their interface, generally. Uh, and I'll show you that here. So you can see, if, if we open up Simple Windows Video Editor and do a new project, I mean, you can see how similar these two look. So there's the spot where you dump in your clips, there's the preview pane, and then there's the spot down below where you see the, the storyboard, as they're calling it, and where you can add multiple tracks and stuff, and where you can stack things horizontally and vertically. And with OpenShot, it's just, there's more to it. There's more that you can do. So I would use this if you're looking to do something more serious. And again, dump this in here, then drop it down into the storyboard. When you've only got one clip, you can drag this over to the beginning, and that way you don't get a bunch of blank space. And what's nice about this one is that you can magnify this bar here. So right now it's set for 15 seconds and you see it goes a minute, 115, 130, 145, 2, 2, and so on. If I 
do this, it's actually magnifying it. Now you see the separations are four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds. If I drag it way out, now you see that's like four minutes. And since this was, I think, two and a half minutes, it fits right there. It, you can add more than uh, 45 minutes or whatever that is. Um, and, and this will just continue to get longer. And what's nice here too, and I've shown this in a couple of other videos, I think. Uh, I think I showed it in how to clean up audio. You could take and for instance, put a, uh, like an MP3 file. Let me see here. I'm just gonna pick something randomly. Hopefully it doesn't get noticed and get flagged for copyright, whatever. But you can take and dump that in there. And now that's the background track. What you'll want to do if you do that is to mess with the volume levels. So maybe you want this entire clip to be at 50% so that the talking in this one is full volume and the music in this one is a lower volume. I'm actually going to get rid of it and not play it at all. But if you wanted to trim, again, going back to the original thing, a simple trim, you would find where you want to trim it. So this is your little preview needle. It's kind of like moving the needle of a record. Let's say I want to trim it at five seconds. Click the scissors. It gives you this little, this little vertical line, this little razor. Click it at five seconds. There we go. It's cut it into two clips. It leaves both of the clips there though, because the program doesn't know if you want this one or if you want this one. So then what you would do, highlight the one you don't want, right click, remove clip. Now the issue is it's advanced five seconds, so you gotta drag it back to the beginning. Oops, come on now. And you'll notice these will snap as well, it snaps to the beginning. And when you add other clips, they'll snap together when they get near one another. This program here has way more stuff in it than video editors. So if you want to do other stuff like changing the volume of video, like um, this transform feature, I think I had shown in a different video. Uh, let's see, transform, sorry. You can cut off stuff that you don't want. You can play around with the sizing of it. Uh, you can, you know, if I want to get rid of me and just show that part, I can do that. I can add a second video and transform it and put that other video maybe up here in this corner. So now I've got two videos going. This will take longer to encode because it's encoding more data, but it's also gonna give you a better output with fewer issues. So those glitches that I was getting in video editor, I've never gotten a glitch in this one. However, this is slower uh, to do the encode. Anyways, when you're done, to save the project, you would do save project as. But if I just wanted to finalize it and then get rid of it and not keep the project files, I would do export, export video, and here you've got some options, which uh, here's the name of the video, here's where it's going to save to. There's some advanced stuff, which if you know what you're doing, then this YouTube video is not for you anyways. But if we come here to simple, the important one is you probably want it on MP4. If you want it on something else, then you probably already know that. Uh, MP4 H.264 is most likely what you're looking for. CPU is fine, that's what's going to do the encoding. If you've got certain graphics processing units, GPUs, that can accelerate the encoding and make it faster, they'll show up as options. Uh, and then the video profile they're calling it. I would normally stick with 720p, 50 or 60 frames per second, or you may want to bump up to 1080p, 60 frames per second, or you may drop back down to 30 frames per second as well. It depends on what types of content you're putting on there. Uh, normally though, for teachers, for school stuff, 720p, 30 frames per second is totally adequate. Sorry, I said 50, 60 before, I meant 30, 60. Those are the two typical ones. 720p, 30 frames per second is probably fine. If you have lots of small text that you're displaying on your video, you might wanna bump up to 1080p, 30 frames per second. If you have lots of motion, like if you have a clip in there of a sports game, then you might want to jump up to 60 frames per second. As long as the original content, the clips that you have, as long as the clips that you have uh, are 60 frames per second to begin with. The difference is higher numbers is higher quality. 
So better resolution and more frames per second means you're getting more information, of course. So 60 frames per second doubles the amount of information that your eye is actually seeing. 60 frames per second, though, can cause the soap opera effect. Um, but usually that's for motion and not for stuff that teachers are going to be doing with books and such. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, however, you should also know that when you go to um, a, a higher resolution or a higher number of frames per second, the file's going to get larger. Okay, So bumping from 720p up to 1080p means you've got more pixels that need to be filled on the screen. That's data. So you take that number of data and multiply it out by however many frames per second there are and you end up with a larger file. That's just the way it is. If you double the number of frames per second, now you have twice as many frames of data, so the file is larger. And then uh, encoding time is gonna depend on your hardware and uh, uh, what settings you choose and if you have an accelerator and stuff. And so um, luckily for most of us as teachers, again, if we're looking at this through the lens of education, we can normally hit encode and walk away and go have dinner or whatever and come back and you know 15 20 minutes later it's done maybe you're lucky and three minutes later it's done whatever um, but at any rate those are the three ways I would recommend other teachers do trimming if you're gonna do more advanced stuff consider open shot or one of the other uh, I would use one of the open source editors but if you want to pay for Final Cut or Adobe that's on you um, if you don't need that advanced stuff, you can either just use photos, uh, again, by right-clicking and doing open with photos, or using the built-in Windows 10 video editor, which uh, if you don't have that shown, it is in Windows 10. If you don't have it shown, check out my other video about how to find the sort of hidden uh, Windows video editor. All right, um, that's it for this one. Hope that helps somebody. See you, bye.